acid that is mineral acid and organic acid today uh, we'll discuss about bases and alkalis uh, before that uh, i want to say one thing how to make acid dilute see uh, uh, as i discussed in the last class that to make acid dilute we add water in acid okay now the question arises okay, what we will add first means uh, how we will add water uh, do we add uh, acid in water or we add water in acid see uh, both are different thing adding uh, acid in water is advisable to dilute acid acid advisable in water is advisable to dilute acid we should not add water in acid because uh, uh, this reaction means when acid reacts with acid water it uh, reacts and release a lot of heat means it is an exothermic reaction okay so a uh, heat is released during this reaction if we will add water in acid the heat will be released but and nothing is there to absorb the heat because we are adding water in acid okay means the small amount of water will mix into large amount of acid okay so at the time of mixing uh, the heat will be re re released in large amount and it will not be absorbed by anything so it, it is uh, dangerous because it may harm uh, us it may burst the container and it may um, spread on our face or body part so it may harm us so uh, what should we do uh, we should mix we should mix uh, acid in water because as water is mixed in acid at the starting of mixing the heat produced will be absorbed by the water present in the container because if we are adding acid in water it means water is in large amount and acid is in less amount means when you put the first drop of acid will go in water then acid will be in less amount and water will be in large amount so to make it dilute we add acid in water okay now uh, i want to base and alkali bases are substances which react with acid to form water and salt bases are bitter in taste and have soapy feel as i uh, told uh, in the previous class that bases have bitter taste and they have a soapy feel means if we touch any base uh, it seems that we are touching uh, soap and if we talk about the chemical behavior uh, when uh, base base reacts with acid it forms salt okay now uh, one more what is there alkalis so some bases are soluble in water and those are called alkalis okay those bases which are soluble in water are called alkalis for example sodium hydroxide and aluminum hydroxide are both bases however sodium hydroxide is also termed as an alkali because it is soluble in water okay sodium hydroxide is also called as an alkali because it is soluble in water okay so uh, this is uh, alkali alkalis are those bases which are soluble in water 
Okay. Uh, now you see uh, some examples of alkalis are sodium uh, hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide. These are the example of alkalis. Means these are soluble in water. Means the the compound sodium hydroxide is soluble in water. Aluminium hydroxide is also soluble in water, so it is an alkali. Uh, sorry, uh, what I said that uh, sodium hydroxide is an alkali because uh, it is soluble in water, but aluminium hydroxide is a base but not soluble in water. But by mistake, I have said earlier that it is also an alkali. But no, uh, sodium aluminium hydroxide is a base. Both are bases. Sodium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide both are bases. But since in these two, only sodium hydroxide is soluble in water, so it is only called alkali. Okay, but both are bases. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, also uh, potassium hydroxide is also water soluble, so it is also called alkali. Okay. These two are very common alkali, and these two are also known as very strong base. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if we we'll talk about ammonium hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide, copper hydroxide, these are weak bases. As far as the definition of alkali is concerned, oxides or hydroxides of metal are called bases in which uh, uh, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are strong bases and others like ammonium hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide, copper hydroxide, they are the Weak bases. Okay. Uh, now uh, there are some more bases. The examples are not given here, but you may say magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. They are also bases, and they are mild bases. Okay. Now we'll talk about uh, indicators. Indicators. Uh, indicators. Uh, uh, by the word indicated is clear that those substances which uh, so uh, about the given other substances which say about other substances and determines or identified that whether the given substances are acid or bases are called indicators. Okay. Acid and bases, uh, some common behavior, what we have discussed previously, they are sour in test, acid, and bases bitter in test. But chemically, how can we identify without testing it? So, uh, for that, indicators are there in chemistry which help in finding out what are the acids and what are the bases. Okay. And these chemicals are called indicators. Actually, uh, what does they do? Simply, they change their own color to show the acid and bases. Okay. They change, the indicators change their own color in acidic and basic medium and so whether the substances given are acid or bases. Uh, for example, litmus. Litmus is an indicator obtained from lichen plant and it is purple in color. Its color changes red in acidic medium and blue in basic medium. See, a lichen plant give us litmus. Litmus is itself purple in color, but in acidic medium, uh, indicators change into red color. Uh, 
uh, it was uh, uh, in red color and in basic medium it changed into uh, blue color okay so the litmus indicator change its color in acidic and basic medium and so whether the substances given are in basic or acidic in nature now litmus uh, uh, is available in the form of solution in the form of paper strip both okay uh, in the form of paper strip it is available in a litmus blue and a litmus red in two colors it is available okay so to check the acid we use red litmus sorry we use gold red of paper that become red in an acidic medium and to check about base we use uh, red litmus that become blue in basic medium okay thanks for today's class tomorrow we'll discuss more about indicators and then basis thank you